Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts video. Today I'm going to go over my soundtrack collection, um, all my vinyl records, and um, I do have quite a bit of things to show. I'm going to get it all into one video here. This is something I wanted to do for a while. Um, I got a pretty decent sized stack of Waxwork, which is my favorite company. I think they're great. I, I think a lot of these companies are really good, but Waxwork to me is just a notch above the rest. Um, that's not to say that Death Waltz and Mondo is not good as well because I do really enjoy their records. I do have some of those to show. Um, I have a stack of Pink Floyd records. I'm going to show everything that I have on vinyl. Uh, we're going to start here with this first pile, which is kind of a miscellaneous pile. The first two are from Rust Blade, which is a company in Italy. And the first one here, these are, these are in no particular order. I'm just going to kind of show them by label and like I said this first one is just kind of miscellaneous but this is Power Out, the collection of scary and thrilly, thrilling soundtracks from Ennio Morricone. This one was limited to 499. I'm not going to pull each record out. Most of these are different colors, swirls, clear, different, uh, different little gimmicks like that but I'm just going to kind of go over the albums that I have and then at the end if you guys want to chime in and tell me which ones you think I should pick up or which ones you own or if you want to do a video of which LPs you have I'd like to check it out here is the second and last Rust Blade record this is Demons music composed by Claudio Simonetti from Goblin of course and there you can see Argento and Simonetti on the back. This one was called a limited edition green vinyl. The next one is a favorite of mine in my collection. This one was put up by Arrow Records and this was Pieces and you got this soundtrack when you ordered the deluxe Pieces edition from Arrow Video last year. Really glad to pick this one up. And there you can see that it is it is just one record, two-sided. Really nice artwork on these. You know, I, should, I probably could pull them out and <clears throat> show you guys the gatefold artwork. And I can put all this stuff away off camera. It makes a big mess, but at least it'll make for a decent video. At least I hope it will. So there is the fold-out image on the gatefold and then it comes with a little insert with a little bit about the recordings one of my favorite editions there that's pieces the next one is called apocalypse canceled and this was a memorial to anton zandor levey who was the founder of the church of satan they also called him the black pope this is a 10 inch record and just to kind of show you a comparison that's what it looks like on top of a 12 inch. And this is just kind of like a little tributary album to Anton LaVey. And you can see that it was signed by members of the group and it was limited to 666. I got number 79. I also imported this one from um, I don't remember if this is a Dutch record. I can't remember. I picked this up a few years ago. And it's it comes on silver vinyl. Next one is some recordings that Charles Manson did while he was in prison. This one is called Walking in the Truth. And there you can see some of the tracks, side A and side B, if you guys want to pause that at all at any time. And I will kind of get in here if you guys want to try to read that. Because I'm going to keep moving. I do have a lot to show. So, 
and here's another Charles Manson. The Hallway of the Always. And as goofy and messed up as Charles Manson was, he was very talented as a musician. And a lot of the guitar playing and stuff he uh, taught himself, and or got uh, fr friends of his taught him over the years. And he was linked to Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys in the 60s. This is a vintage vinyl here. This one is called The Occult Explosion. This one is actually from the 70s, I believe. Let me see if it says on the back. Most of the vinyl I have is from the past, no older than five years. But like I said, this one is um, an actual vintage record. And it's just little excerpts of, um, let's see if, I'm not gonna pull this one out. It does come with the 12 page booklet. Uh, there's bits on here about astrology, UFO, psychic powers, meditation, ESP, witchcraft, spiritualism, Indian magic, Satanism. Anton, Anton LaVey is in here. Some uh, sound bites of him in here. And many more. And it's on, there's uh, two records in this set here. It's a pretty cool little piece to get. This next one is called Alistair Crowley, the Black Magic Masters. This one was limited to 666. It came on red vinyl, gold stamped silk screen jacket. And he was another kind of a master of the occult. Alistair Crowley. Here's a show that was one of my childhood favorites. This was called The Great Space Coaster. And I picked this one up on eBay secondhand for, it was pretty cheap. It was signed by the, um, I believe it was this fella here. And uh, Ray something, I'm drawing a blank, but let me see if it says here on the back. Uh, J, J. Bockle, I think. But yeah, this was kind of a, like a Jim Henson's style variety show that was come on Saturday mornings in the US. Kind of a kids or a preteen type show. It was really good, it had good music in it. And it was very 70s, a very 70s style show. Here is Friday the 13th, the series. This is another one that's original. This was from the 80s, this record here. And this was a show similar to like uh, Twilight Zone or The Outer Limits. It was called Friday the 13th, but it never had anything about Jason Voorhees or anything like that. It was just kind of a, like a anthology type show and it had supernatural monsters, stuff like that. Pretty good show. It only lasted for three seasons. Here's one I picked up at Barnes & Noble not too long ago. This one is Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. He won a bunch of awards. Best Picture of the Year, 1995. Also directed and starred in it. And he also composed the very first song called Claudia's Theme, which is only a minute and three seconds. It doesn't have any lyrics in it, but it's a very kind of a beautiful melodic uh, little piece. And it, it plays throughout the song, or throughout the movie, I'm sorry. And, and this is a very, very good film and a very good soundtrack. Glad to have that one. So that was the miscellaneous pile. The next pile I will get into is going to be the Death Waltz slash Mondo. And again, these are in no particular order. I'm just going to kind of pull from this pile. The first one is a very, very good movie in my opinion. This is Fulci's The New York Ripper. And this is, um, it's made to look like it's kind of a throwback poster where you can see the, the seams. And then it has the 25 cent sticker, which is actually printed into the jacket. It is not actually a sticker on there. But there you can see the tracks. And again, I, I really enjoy this, this movie and it's a great soundtrack. It's another Fulci film here. This one is The House by the Cemetery. And I'm trying 
trying to see who the artist was. It was Graham Humphreys. He did a lot of the art for Waxwork and Death Waltz Mondo. He also did a lot of artwork for Arrow and other companies like that. He's a world-renowned artist and he's very, very good. And uh, this is a classic Italian, Italian soundtrack with um, classic goblin style Italian, Italo, Italio Pro, Pro, uh, Prague. And um, one of Fulci's better films, and actually this is a probably one of the better soundtracks for many of his films. Here is Zombie Flesh Eaters. It says it's the Strong Uncut Edition. Music by Fabio Fritzi. The next one is Silent Night, Deadly Night, the 30th anniversary release. There are the side one and two of the first record, and then side three and four of the second record. Next one here is um, Cannibal Holocaust. There are the tracks. one here is City of the Living Dead. I believe that is Graham Humphreys' art again. Yep, Graham Humphreys. Definitive version of this classic Italian soundtrack includes 17 newly mastered tracks, including several unreleased cues and a bonus 10-minute live suite recorded in London in 2013. And the cool thing about a lot of these earlier releases, they come with a poster. The posters are usually a little bit smaller than like a, maybe like half the size of a Scream Factory poster, somewhere around that, that size. I believe a lot of these are still available. Some may be sold out, I'm not sure. Here's another 10 inch, this one is Christmas Evil. Pretty, pretty cool artwork there in the ornaments made to look like zombie heads coming off the tree and I like the titles of the songs you just have sequence 1 through 12 kind of synth type pop here's a good film this is a George Eastman film called Absurd from 1982. Everybody has seen Absurd by now, I'm sure. Here's one of my favorites. This is an animated show called The Iron Giant. I really love this movie. If you guys haven't seen The Iron Giant, it's not necessarily a kid's movie. It's very much a family movie because it's just as much for adults as it is for children, I think. Very, very touching and um, excellent movie. Just all around great movie. I would give it a 9 out of 10, to be honest, and it's a two record set. And see if I can zoom in if you guys want to check out the tracks. This has several different Blu-ray releases. There was actually a box set that you can get with the Blu-ray, and it comes with like the little Iron Giant figure. Just a, like a little cheap plastic figure, but... Here is The Beyond. Another Fulci great film, and that is beautiful artwork again by Graham Humphreys. And I have one, uh, two more 
here for the Mondo slash Death Waltz. This is the big gun down, soundtrack by Ennio Morricone. And it's another two record set. I wish more records came out on for the soundtracks for some of these spaghetti westerns. Some of that music is unbelievable, really good music. I think a lot of them are on CD or digital download, but I would like to see some of them come on the uh, vinyl soundtracks because, I mean, it, these just look better. They're bigger. The artwork is bigger, obviously. Here is uh, Fulci's Horror and Thriller soundtrack music from his films. And in this set, you get music from A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, The New York Ripper, Manhattan Baby, The Beyond, Demonia, the House by the Cemetery, and The Door to Silence. And check out that artwork going from normal all the way to Beyond Repair. Really nice addition here. Glad to pick this one up. So that was my little stack of Mondo slash Death Waltz. And for those of you guys that don't know, Mondo did buy Death Waltz several years ago now. Now onto the waxwork. These are my favorite additions here. These are really cool. Uh, first one is uh, Reanimator. This is just a one record set here. The music composed and conducted by Richard Band. And uh, he did a one hell of a job, I think. Because that's an excellent movie and the soundtrack is awesome. The next one here is Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, which was kind of a flop. It, it wasn't, uh, didn't really do well critically or at the box office, but I still had fun with it. And, you know, the series itself was kind of so-so as well, but I do own it. It's still fun to watch. It's another anthology style show, similar to like Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, Tales from the Crypt. Um, the one, the best thing about this, well, not this movie, but the show was the opening intro. If you guys have never seen this show before, Go over to, go here on YouTube, pause the video, and go check out the intro to this. It's really cool. It's kind of chilling. I like that, that, little, uh, that little prologue in the beginning of the show. The next one here is The Howling. Which reminds me, I, I'm going to be recording a couple of videos this week. After the soundtrack video, I was tagged by... Mrs. B and me to do a werewolf, I think it was five or six questions. So I'm going to be doing that at some point this week. And then speaking of Mrs. B and me, Derek and myself and uh, Jason from Horrific Nightmares, we're going to kind of do like a little collaboration and show some of our favorite Friday the 13th stuff because um, this Friday is Friday the 13th. So. So you guys are going to be getting about probably three videos from Old Walnuts this week, so I hope that doesn't overdo it. But it's just for fun. So next one here is uh, Clyde Barker's Nightbreed, <clears throat> which um, the movie itself, it took a while to kind of grow on me. I, the first time I saw it, I didn't really care too much for it. It was okay. Uh, second time was a little bit better. Third time, uh, you know, I, I think it's starting to grow on me. It's, I think it's not as great as a lot of people make it out to be, but the soundtrack is really good. Nightbreed. Another anthology. Horror from My Youth, Creep Show from 1982. George A. Romero, Stephen King collaboration. And who doesn't like Creep Show? I mean, this. Not only is the music great, but the, the whole entire show is awesome. Even Creepshow 2 was good, and I think they did a Creepshow 3 and 4, which um, weren't as successful. But here's another anthology. This is Trick or Treat. Very good movie. Very good soundtrack. You get two records with... There's the songs there. You guys can check those out if you'd like to pause it. 
And now into my Friday the 13th stuff. Like I said, this stuff was not in order. I was going to put the Friday the 13th in order at least, but I didn't do that. So these are out of order. This is part four of the final chapter. Waxwork really, really does a great job. These are on 180 gram vinyl and there's two records and this set is really heavy. It's a really nice put together um, little set there. Here is the part three, the reg regular edition. I also have part three with the lenticular. You, you'll see that momentarily. It's a two record set. Harry Manfredini. Excellent series all around and excellent music. Here's part two, Sackhead Jason. Jason, mother's talking to you. Here is the first installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. This one's getting a little harder to find now. I've, I've seen this one for about 60, 70, and even up. I mean, I've even seen this for around 100. So the thing about these records, when you get them at Waxwork, sometimes they repress them. I know that Creepshow, that Creepshow soundtrack was repressed. Um, but sometimes when they sell out, they're, they're gone, and you got to pay ridiculous prices because you missed out. So I always grab them when I can. And if you guys are interested, Waxwork is taking pre-orders for Tenebrae, which is going to be shipping very soon. And the thing about Dario Argento's Tenebrae, it's the first time it was ever released on vinyl. So it's going to be a collector's piece, plus it's a great soundtrack. Here is the Friday the 13th Part 3 3D cover. It doesn't really do much as far as changing the image, but it has kind of a depth where the, the weapons and the hand are a little bit closer to the, your view than Jason, who was kind of set further in the back. And you can see the... Uh, shards of glass that are flying at you. It's probably hard to pick that up on the camera, on my camera phone, but, oh, this one was also signed. You're gonna be seeing this one again at the end of the week because um, for my Friday the 13th little piece that I'm gonna to put together, I'm gonna to show you guys my 13 favorite Friday the 13th pieces that I own in my collection. So if you guys are watching this video all the way through, you're gonna have a little sneak peek of what's coming up. But uh, yeah, you can expect that on Friday. I'm gonna record that and uh, upload it Friday. Here's Dawn of the Dead. I know this one sold out instantly. I think it sold out on pre-order and now it's 60, 70, 80 bucks, 100 bucks. So this is the Goblin soundtrack for Dawn of the Dead, the original. Artwork here by Butcher Billy. And that's the thing, I mean, you, you can't really sleep on these because you know if you're on the fence you might as well just go ahead and grab it um, because once they're gone sometimes they're gone who knows if they're going to repress Dawn of the Dead you never know so and here's Day of the Dead this one has been available for a long time it never did sell out so I, I grabbed it but eventually it'll be gone uh, two more here to show for wax work, and I just showed this these last two recently because these are my latest two pickups. I got the Exorcist William Friedkin film. And the last is Darkman, Sam Raimi. Um, yeah, so those were my wax work. I'm very proud of those. I, I, if there's anything I'm missing that you guys think I would enjoy or you just see that it's missing from my collection, go ahead, comment below. Let me know. Give me some, some feedback or some, some uh, suggestions. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Here's a little stack of rock records that I just picked up over the last couple of years. The first one is Megadeth, Rust in Peace. I, I do like the early Megadeth. And this one was a limited edition, 180 gram vinyl. It was restored. I thought, always thought Dave Mustaine was a, a great front man, and I thought when Megadeth was early in their career, he they were excellent. They were really, really good. That doesn't mean I'm going to buy all their records, but that's one I wanted to pick up. And again, I'm not really a huge Kiss fan, 
but uh, Cycle Circus was a good record, and this has a nice lenticular. I like some of the Kiss stuff, but I'm not a huge, huge fan of Kiss. To be honest, I could take them or leave them. And I'm a, I am a huge Metallica fan. Eventually, I would like to pick up their whole line of records. And another one I'd like to pick up is Black Sabbath. I'd like to get a lot of, especially their early stuff. A lot of the records are being re-released, so they're easier to pick up now. Uh, this one is hardwired to self-destruct the deluxe edition, which contains three records, a bonus CD with tw uh, 12 tracks. You get a lithograph set and eight buttons inside there, plus a digital download. And Metallica has been rocking for many, many, many years, and they still put on one hell of a show. And then finally, um, let's see how I can do this here. These are all my Pink Floyd records. Pink Floyd is my favorite group of all time. And I'm going to do these in order. Most of these are all reissues. So these are the more uh, thicker vinyl. These are 180 gram. Um, <clears throat> and they're all remastered. So these sound a lot better than the originals. I was thinking about tracking down the originals and... Um, just to have the vintage feel of the Pink Floyd records, but I think I'm better off just spending the money on these reissues. Uh, this one is The Piper at the Gates of Dawn from 1967. This was their first record. Oops. Number two is A Saucer Full of Secrets from 1968. I don't know if I've ever showed these off before. I can't remember. The next one is music from the film More. Pink Floyd did the soundtrack for it, and that was in 1969. I suppose I should be showing the backs too in case you guys are interested in checking out the tracks. I started to go a little faster when I noticed we're almost at 30 minutes. If you guys are still watching, thumbs up to you for sticking with me. Next one is Omagama, and this one was from 1969 as well. So they were very busy in their first couple years. They put out four records in two years. Oops, kind of blazed through there. The next one is called Adam Hart Mother. That's from 1970. Then they came out with Metal, and that was from 71. Has one of these days on there, one of, one of their bigger hits. It's kind of a unique texture there on the cover. I don't know if you can see that, but it almost has, it's kind of like a rough texture. One of their better ones, this is Obscured by Clouds. And that one came out in 1972. There is the track listing. This is quite possibly their best, depending on who you ask. Some people would say The Wall, but Dark Side of the Moon, to me, is probably my favorite. And this one came out in 1973, the year before I was born. One hell of a record. This one is Wish You Were Here. Excellent song. Another great record. This was when they were at their peak, I think. These next three, four albums, they were just in a whole different stratosphere, and this really, really put them on the map. 
I wish you were here. It came out in 75. This one kind of took a little step back from Wish You Were Here, but not too much. This was the Animals Remastered Edition. And of course, it only just has five songs, but they're long. And Pigs is a good song. And there you can see that iconic image of the pig floating between the smokestacks of the, I'm not sure if that's a coal yard or some kind of a coal plant, power plant. And then this bad fella here came out, Pink Floyd The Wall, 1979. Two record set. One of the best records ever made by anybody. And then the final cut. This one came out in 1983. See the tracks there. Momentary Lapse of Reason. I believe this one came out in um, 87. I was in middle school when this came out and I remember the song Learning to Fly. And that was a great video. The Native American man who jumped off the cliff and started flying. I think he turned into a bird or something. But that's one hell of a song. On the Turning Away is another beautiful song on this album. This one was their last good album. This was the Division Bell from 1994. After this, the band kind of weren't really seen eye to eye they broke up Waters and Gilmore still to this day they're not really seeing eye to eye and Gilmore doing a lot of things on his own and they're, they're each carrying on the Pink Floyd name so they're doing their own thing with it It'd be nice to see them get back together one more time but they got to be both in their 70s by now um, here is the Endless River and this one, I have to admit, I don't really, I haven't really delved into this one. This one came out a couple years ago, uh, 2014. I have not really, there's a couple tracks I heard that they play on the local radio station here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But um, I have, there's a lot of songs here I haven't even really checked out yet. And this is a two LP set. Comes with a 16 page booklet. And then there's a couple of miscellaneous records from Pink Floyd that I have, and this one, I haven't listened to this one yet either. It's called Wish You Were Here, Symphonic. Uh, it's the London Orion Orchestra with Alice Cooper and others who play Pink Floyd songs, and they kind of pay homage to the super group that Pink Floyd was. So there you see the group that they put together. And there are these songs that they perform. And then one more. This one is called Live in New York City, 1977. I think this is a bootleg or a fan-made edition. And these are the songs that they played live in 1977 in New York City. Shine on you crazy diamond, parts one through five. Welcome to the machine, have a cigar. Wish you were here. Shine on you crazy diamond, parts six through nine. And that is it. So thank you guys for joining me. Hope you have a great week. Comment below. Let me know if there's anything that you would recommend or let me know if there's anything that maybe I suggested in this video that maybe you're going to go pick up now and you can talk about anything you want in my comment section. It doesn't matter. And I will get back to you. I'll get back to every comment and uh, it may take a day or two sometimes. I get a little busy at times, but I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you very soon for the werewolf tag. Take care, guys.